The third part of the oscilloscope lab is to look at listed view fi figures. Listed view figures we can create when we plot, instead of one signal in time, we can plot two signals against each other. So I'm going to move the HP to here. And I'm going to bring in two leads from the power amplifier and the signal interface that's being controlled by our computer. So we're going to need the software turned on to control the signal generator on the computer. Well, for this you figures, we're going to have two sources plotted against each other. Right now I have both sources grounded. I'm going to turn on the, uh, the computer voltage source that's oscillating, and I'm triggering off the computer. Now I'm going to turn the HP source on, and that will be this top trace line. Um, but it's not going to be triggered off that, so it's going to kind of move across the screen, and I apologize. So that's the computer source. Now these are both in time. What we want to do is take the seconds per division knob and move it down to the XY setting. In other words, it will plot the X source against the Y source. And there we have it. And then I'm going to adjust both sources so that I fill up the screen and that I'm um, as centered on the screen as, as possible. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the HP. And you'll see that the computer is just bouncing back and forth. And now I'm going to turn off the computer and turn on the HP, and you'll see that the HP is just going up and down according to the frequency setting on the HP, which is near 100 hertz. What we learned in the first two parts of this lab is that the HP was not calibrated, so it's probably not oscillating at 100 hertz right now. The listed you figure will allow us to find out at what frequency the HP is oscillating. So what we're going to do in the software, we're going to change the frequency of the computer until it matches that of the HP. And I'm getting further off, so I'm going to hold the control button down and try to zero in on the frequency. When I have a one-to-one -one relationship, I should get a shape like one of these, and it should be stationary. Now I'm going to hold the Option key down, and on the computer screen, I'm going to click up and down. So what I'm doing right now is adjusting the X um, frequency, which is the computer. I have much finer controls over that adjustment than I do over the HP. See, we're getting closer and closer. Damn. How much of that was? Well, sorry if that was out of focus. We weren't looking at the preview. So somewhere around there. And then we could use the, um, the command key if we wanted to, or I guess we just weren't. That's a one-to-one, -one, which means that the computer is cycling at the same frequency that the HP is cycling. Right here, we see that they're slightly off because we're seeing the signal change. Okay? It's, it's faking you out. You might think it's a three-dimensional signal, and it's really not. It's a parametric plot. It's a two-dimensional parametric plot. Each value along here is a point in time. So you could plot this on an XYZ with Z as the time. Um, but that would just continue to climb. Now, what would happen if I doubled the computer input, doubled the frequency? In other words, as it goes back and forth here, it'll go back and forth twice as much for the one time that the HP goes up and down. What's that going to look like? That's what we want you to discover. And try to create three verticals versus one horizontal. See what that's going to look like. Try to create three horizontals compared to one vertical. 
see what that will look like. Try to get a 3-4 and a 4-3 and work out the math for each of these. Um, in the next movie, you can see the, the software um, that we have, an MS Excel file, and then there's another movie for a Mathematica file. We want you to try to understand what's happening with the Lishes U figures.